we're actually bringing out some truths. Peel back the layers of all this fluff. Shining the light on this industry as a whole. Maybe you should stay away from it. Hi everybody, welcome to Real Estate Raw and Uncut. This is episode 118. I'm Byron Lazine. He's Tim Bure. This is John Nelson. Correct. Golf pro, John. Former. Nelson. Former. The trend. What is the uh, handicap? The handicap's about five or six at this point. I thought once you're a pro, you're always a pro in golf. It's a relative term these days. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a four, is that what you said? Four? Four to five, they're about six. Is that good? That's not bad. Considering, you know, being a professional in the you past. Still, still swinging the club right now a lot? Modest. A little bit, but I'm working more in real estate, so I don't have much time to play golf. Right. So yeah. We appreciate part of it. Is, is, you know, part of it is that the, the trend is moving away from the golf profession. It's a, it's kind of a dying art, unfortunately. Why is, why is that? The game's in decline. You have to look in the future and realize that millennials and people like that, they're not taking up the game. But the number one driving factor, yeah, that's part of it. But the number one driving factor is the tiger boom is over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tiger so created the storm. To tiger. That's a huge part of it, absolutely. Tiger created the storm that led the golf industry and the golf clubs to be drastically overbuilt in the past. I was just going to say, I remember I was, a time when there was golf course after golf course being planned and being built. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can't be cheap. Yeah, and the, one of the reasons we decided to shoot this video, I had a meeting uh, almost last year, it was like uh, almost a year ago. Um, these developers who had bought this piece of land, you remember this project, sure. we won't go into the, well, I guess we will go into some of the specifics. <laughs> we won't go into a lot of the specifics. Um, basically, they bought this piece of land back during the last real estate boom, had thoughts of doing mm. a really, really nice high-end golf course, and then they wanted to see what they could do with this land. Um, and one of the developers, one of the decision makers said to me, Byron, do you realize that there are 100 golf courses closing a year. That's a lot. So, in this country, in the U.S. of A. So, we weren't going to go golf course with that land, and it was kind of like, what do we do to kind of use this land? And in that case, there's not a lot of opportunity. That, that one was not yet a golf course, right? Right. The issue mm -hmm. when you have had the approvals. Courses, yeah. So if you have a golf course that you you know you, we're used to you're used to playing on. What are the negative attributes of that course now if you want to do something else with it and change the flavor? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it a, you have to go through zoning, obviously, if you want to do anything else. Of course. Golf course. I wouldn't imagine there's much, right? I mean, there can't be pollution with a golf course. Well, I think Absolutely. There, 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 is. there is. There is. Really? All the chemicals they chemicals use. Chemicals you spray, pesticides, so it's all a phase of one and a phase two, correct? Of course. Phase two soil Environmental samples. Environmental studies. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now you're it's kind of like the you just drive by it's so green and pretty. There's a reason why it's green. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's treated. So, so yeah, I would think that that would be an, a major issue. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to liquidate a golf course, you have to go through all those proceedings, but then you also have to find a new use for it. That's right. And that might be restricted by environmental concerns, like you said, pesticides, herbicides. That's going to require a phase one, a phase two, soil samples, everything across the board, and it's very costly. So, from a town's perspective, obviously these towns are looking at their bottom line and they're looking at the grand lists, and they want to make sure that there aren't as many kids going to their school. So they would probably rather not see a condo complex or mm -hmm. multifamily housing, you know, Section 8 if, housing going up. But if they were going to do condos, mm -hmm. the market would have to make sense in order to Supply that, right? and demand, absolutely. So what would you be looking for? If, if somebody came to you like that, that one particular situation, they said, well, it's not going to be a golf course anymore because that's where the, you know, the trend's not there. We want to do condos yeah, or density, something. Density, you know, so it was like an R10 or below so you could get in. Enough what's, clusters. What's the first thing you look at? Uh, supply and demand, right? You got to know how many are selling, how much supply do you have, and how much demand is there in that area in the price range. Yeah. Can you get it done? So if you if, if you've narrowed down a price range, are you looking at what the months of inventory? What do, what's your number one key indicator? I don't know if it's number. I think the number one is jobs within a certain yeah. location. You know what I mean? And and if there is, if you, it's not the whole. If you build it, they will come because you probably have phase one, phase two, and phase three. You want to make sure that. Well, let's say it costs 200 bucks a square to build this thing, yeah. but you're only, you know, the market value for condos in that area is a buck fifty. Bad idea all day long, right? So my thing would be, what can you do for the community to increase jobs? Mm -hmm. What could you do? I mean, there's a big, produce is everything, 
right? So what can, is it farming? You know, what is it? On the West Coast, it would be farming if they had rain. If they had rain. <laughs> yeah, true. What, is there anything unique you've seen uh, an actual golf course be transformed into? Like, what's the most unique? Or? It was kind of an ancillary benefit. It was one of these things where a golf course up in Middletown was a developer or uh, somebody that I worked for had a driving range in Manchester and a golf course in Middletown. And it went bankrupt. It went just basically overgrown. And the town ended up annexing it, turning it into a park. Okay. See that? That's kind of cool. But that may not be the highest and best use of that land. Probably so not. If you're a potential developer, what would be attractive to you? What would create jobs? Maybe you said farming. We'll see, people maybe love it's... the open space. You know, they do. You could do a park. But you know, um, maybe it's you know an athletic. Have you seen it? What a cool athletic facility! Like, could you do football? Yeah. Soccer. You, you know what I mean? Give her all. There's usually a lot of hills in the golf course, though. Gotta get rid of them hills. <laughs> yeah, hey, you'd, have to, you'd have to move some dirt. Some dirt. Could well, be. Tell us. Reach out to us. Let us know what you think would be a good use of golf course if, if you're going to be in and around an area where there's one of those 100 golf courses closing each year. Uh, or if you've seen something that's been pretty unique um, that's happened in your community, please drop us a comment. And uh, John, what did you think? First, you first run on cut. You tell me. I thought you were awesome. We're gonna absolutely. We're gonna have John on a little more. <laughs> we gotta get him on the radio awesome show too. Resource. There it is. Should be listening to the radio show. All right, guys. Thank you. See you.